Well, good morning, friends. Hello, happy Tuesday. It is Tuesday, the 26th of June already. I can't believe it. It is down the very last week of the month, and I am just getting back from our annual conference. We were in Indianapolis last week, and it was an incredible, awesome, amazing event, and I'm all pumped up and excited for the next six months of the year. And to really watch this this team and this organization sort of take off and grow. So today I want to hop in here and just share with you some of my some of my post summit takeaways. Now, some of you might might not be Team Beach Buddy coaches. You might not be a part of this organization, but I guarantee you that you go to events for whatever business that you're a part of. I guarantee you go to summits, you go to conferences, you do professional and personal development on a daily basis. And there are a couple of things that over the past seven years that I've been doing this business, hi, good morning guys, that I have noticed. And a couple of those things are people get paralyzed. They get paralyzed by fear, they get paralyzed by information overload, and what they do when people get paralyzed is you freeze. You stop, you take no action, and then it throws you into this downward spiral of self-doubt. Anybody? Anybody feel that way? So if that would be you, I want to just talk to you a little bit about the mindset that it takes in order to take action, to take action on your dreams. So I, I've watched many people, right? I've watched many people go through their business and start and launch a business and be really, really excited about it. And they're going through and they're doing the daily activities. And people will send me private messages about this all the time. They'll say to me, like, I am doing the activities. I'm inviting. I'm growing my social media. I'm adding new contacts every single day. I'm following up. I'm posting on social media. I'm doing my, you know, seven to ten stories every single day. But I'm not getting anywhere. I'm not having any success. And I'm not getting new customers. And so there is this, this concept of belief. So the first thing that I have to ask you is, do you believe in what you're doing? Do you believe in the company that you're a part of? Do you believe in the products? And do you believe in yourself? Like, are you willing to bet on yourself that you can be successful? All right. A lot of times the answer is no. And a lot of times I also see people that say, yeah, I believe in myself but you don't really believe in yourself. It's sort of a surface level. You're one of those people that maybe are one foot in, one foot out, and you're like, you know what? If you say things to yourself like, I'm gonna give it six months, and if I don't succeed, then no, no, not a whole lot is lost, right? Like I can just check out, or maybe you have a plan B. Maybe you're gonna get yourself a part-time job while you pursue this dream in hopes that it'll become a reality, but just in case, you have a backup plan. If you're doing those things, you are not willing to bet on yourself. When I look at other successful business owners out there, they bet on themselves. They invested every single cent to their name and they were willing to put it all on the line for their visions and their dreams. And I look at people and I use this in my summit presentation, like Sylvester Stallone, right? He wrote and starred in the Rocky films and, and he was one of those people that was willing to go to the absolute ends of the earth for his dream of becoming an actor, despite the people that told him he was too ugly, despite the 1,500 rejections by different agents that he went and visited. And you know what? There aren't even 1,500 agents in New York City, which means he went back multiple times to agents and said, like, I am worthy of an, being an actor. You need to hire me. And no, after no, after no, door after door after door was being shut on him. And he sold his best friend, his dog. He sold his wife's wedding ring, ended in divorce, and still refused to settle. Why? Because he had a vision. He had a vision and there was no plan B. And you know, when Tony Robbins asked him in that interview, you know, why he didn't just go get a job so that he could at least pay his rent, he said, because I wanted to keep that hunger alive. I never wanted to get comfortable enough to the point where I put my dreams on the back seat and I stopped pursuing it because I could make ends meet. And so as a business owner right now, are you betting on yourself? Like, are you putting all of the eggs in this basket and you say to yourself, I believe, I believe that I will figure it out, even though I don't know exactly how I'm going to get there. I don't know what the road is going to look like, but I'm going to get there. I will guarantee that some of you are letting failures 
define you. And you maybe had, maybe you put up your pers- first post on social media that you were launching this new business and you didn't get likes or comments. And so you looked at that as a sign that you weren't going to be successful at this. And you never made a second post or a third post because one post dictated your success. You're not being relentless. You're being weak. And I'll just call it what it is because I truly believe that. You have to dig down in and understand that building a business is going to take grit. It's going to take work. It's going to take time and consistency and energy and drive. And you cannot let little failures along the way dictate the outcome. You are also going to have people that quit on you. You're going to have people that you think are with you to the end and they're going to leave. And you can't take that responsibility for yourself. And you know what? It doesn't matter what level of success that you're at, whether you're brand new in this business or you've been doing it for seven years. Please don't ever think that when you get to my stage of the game that it's going to be, quote unquote, easy. Sure. Yes, I don't have to, the inviting is a little bit different, the following up, the posting on social media, I've got that experience, but at every stage of the game, there's new challenges, right? There's creating a culture and building a team and, you know, empowering leadership. And so there will always be challenges. It's just, I choose that I am going to learn from each and every one of those situations that I am faced with. So are you in fact Do you believe in yourself? Are you willing to bet on yourself or are you giving up too easily? That's kind of the first thing. The next thing is, are you taking action? Coming out of an event, you know, there is a lot of excitement. There is a lot of hype and there is a lot of new directions that you can go. So have you sat down at your desk or at your kitchen table and put it on the calendar what you're going to do and when? Have you created a strategic plan? Have you said to yourself, I'm going to be at a different spot next year when I go to that same annual conference that I am right now? What does that look like? Define where you want to be visually. Like what, how much money do you want to be making? What is the status that you want to have? Do you want to be living in a different house? Do you want to be doing something different with your time? Who do you want to be around you? What I want you to close your eyes and visualize where you want to be. What is that different place actually look like for you? Maybe it's six months from now. Where do you want to be? And then I want you to do whatever you need to do to visualize that. Do you need to print out pictures? Do you need to change the screensaver on your phone? Every single morning, you repeat to yourself who you are becoming and the actions you need to take. And then instead of waiting for Monday or when the kids go back to school in the fall or for July 1st, I want you to say right now, today, One foot in front of the other, what do I need to do to begin taking action on my dreams? All of us think that it's like one giant jump from where we're at today to the goal. But that's not it at all. If you can say to yourself, I'm going to focus on an action right now. I'm going to focus on an action in a couple more hours. I'm going to focus on one one step, one step at a time, one invite, one follow-up, one post, one business opportunity invite. At a, at a time, if you can keep your head down, your blinders on, use your time wisely, right? And eventually you're going to look up and you're going to be standing in front of the goal. And you're going to look back and you're going to say, wow, I learned so much in this process. All the skills that I've sharpened, the person that I've become, I'm evolving, I'm changing, and I've reached this goal and I did it. And I feel so empowered that I took the action needed. So you've got to sit down and plan, prioritize. What is going to give me the biggest return on my investment? There are going to be things that are going to be time wasting. There are going to be things that are value added. Is this, is this activity I'm doing right now an income producing activity or am I wasting time? I want you to ask yourself that every single day. Take action. Don't hold back. If you find yourself saying, I'll do that tomorrow or I'll do that when the kids go back to school or I'll do that after vacation or I'll do that on Monday, that's a good sign that you're procrastinating. You need to catch yourself and do it now. Okay. Then the last thing is this, who are you spending your time with? You know, I think it's really important. This actually happened to me twice, um, in the past, like two days that I've heard people say this. Number one, did you go to an event and spend yourself, spend time with people, please? I would love for somebody to comment and say they did spend time with these kinds of people. Did you spend time with people who complained? 
who complained about the recognition, who complained about how far they had to walk to an event, complained about the speakers, complained about where the business is at right now. Oh, I, you know, only those people that are in their 20s, they can build an Instagram following. Only those people that got in now, like, oh, you had to get in when the business first started. And, you know, are you complaining? Are you come? Are you surrounding yourself? Like, were you in a hotel room with people who were talking about all of the reasons why they couldn't be successful, and they were looking for you to buy into their negative conversations so that they could commiserate together and they weren't alone, and that they would feel validated if you actually said, like, "Yep, I know exactly how you feel. I agree with that." You know, um, oh, let's go, let's go look at those people's stories. Let's see what they're up to. Yep, you know, I'm not blonde. I wasn't in a test group, you know, I didn't, I don't have a big transformation, right? Like there are a lot of people out there that are negative and they come to events and then they disguise themselves as amazing coaches or as distributors or whatever business that you're a part of. And you know what, if you're not careful, you're going to get sucked into that negative vortex and you are going to become that person before you know it, you're going to be turning in your cancellation because you think that they're speaking truth into your life when they're not. And so you become the sum of the five people you spend your time with. Who are you spending your time with? Are you spending your time with the dreamers and the believers and the people that are hustling and working hard? Or are you spending your time with the complainers and the people that are looking for validation as to why they can't be successful? Whoever you spend your time with, that's who you're going to become. I'm going to tell you, last year, my business went through this, this sort of transformation, right? I built my business. 90% of it was through my blog and through my Facebook page. All of a sudden, I saw my traction begin to shift, and I wasn't getting as much sort of traction as I was before. And there were people in the organization that were like, I'm out. I'm out. This is a sign. Our market is saturated. You know, there's too many coaches in the network. It's time for me to move on. There's this new business opportunity that's, you know, that's creating more income and wealth faster. And I think to myself, number one, let's look at who's succeeding right now. There are lots of people succeeding. Let's go find out what they're doing. Where are they building in their business at? Who are they talking to? What's their posture? What's their attitude? I shifted my focus and I was like, let's learn something new. And guess what happened? We rose to the top. Our team rose to the top. Leaders rose to the top. But if I would have stayed in any sort of negative headspace for even a millisecond, my whole team would have followed that direction. The speed of the leader is the speed of the pack, right? That is the, what you have to think about. And so I look at I look at that as a sign, you know, and I see people every day that need what we have to offer. And I know that the opportunity is out there. And guess what? It's going to happen two years from now. Again, we're going to be, you know, think about where we were five years ago. There was no Instagram stories. There was no Facebook live. You know, all of the things that we have now, we didn't have then. So you have to say to yourself, like, I need to make sure that I'm surrounding myself with the innovative people, with the people that are in the trenches, that are working hard, that are looking for opportunity, that are rooted in the mission of what we do. And I love it. I really love it that you guys were surrounded by positive people. And I was too. And you know what? I believe that that's a choice. I believe that we surround ourselves with positive people because we are those positive people. So, you know, if you ever see that, if maybe you see a success partner of yours or a friend of yours or somebody you know that seems to be kind of playing into that, call them out on it and just remind them who they're spending their time with because, you know, there are great people that sometimes get pulled in the wrong direction too. So what do we need to do? Taking action. We want to make sure, number one, we have 100% belief. There isn't one foot in. There isn't one foot out. We believe in what we're doing. We're taking action, not next week, but today. But I want to make sure that we're taking purposeful action. Sit down, write it on your calendar, put the dates of, you know, the launches of programs and when things are happening so that we can make sure that we are strategic about it and we're giving ourselves enough time. So we take action. We set goals. Don't just say, I want to be in a different place than where I am right now. Actually set purposeful goals for where you're going that you can visualize that have an end date that are just very detailed that as you, if you close your eyes, you actually can see them happening. All right. And then we're spending ourselves, spending our time with the right people. 
Very important, very key to your success. Have you found yourself a success pod or partner or group that will challenge you and push you outside of the team that you're in right now? Um, definitely want to look at making sure that you do that. And then last but not least, you've got to, you have got to go today. You have to move. You have to move on that vision. You have to move on that dream. And whatever you started out with, it could be nothing. We all started with zero, but be relentless in that vision, that vision for success. And I'm going to share my summit speech with all of you a little bit later today, right here on my page. So come check it out. But I want to make sure that everybody is at a different spot next year when you come back. So how many of you have already registered? And I will see you next year in Indianapolis again. Make sure your teams are registered. Make sure you're registered. Make sure you're talking up the reasons why this has been such a powerful event because you want to make sure that you bring people with you. My very first summit event, I remember being there with one of my diamond coaches and we were, we did a five and we did a zero. I think there was like five of us there and we're like, we're going to have 50 people, 50 people there. Right. And we posted that in our team page and we said, all right, 50 people at this event. I believe in the power of events. I believe in the power of energy. And so we did that. And then the next year, I think we had 100 people there. So set the goal, set a goal that's scary, rally the team and talk about it every single time you do a team call. Every time you talk about getting together, make sure that you're talking about events. All right. So definitely, definitely make sure you do that. And then we have another event coming in just a week and a half. It's called Super Saturday. And so if you are interested in the opportunity or you're new or you've never been to a live event, get to an event in your area so you can feel the passion and excitement that a business opportunity can bring to the table. All right. Okay, guys, I hope that this was super helpful for each and every one of you. Do me a favor. Um, I'll put it up on my podcast so you can just go find me on iTunes. Find me at Melanie Mitro. It's the Women Inspiring Women podcast. Please subscribe. Write me a little, um, make sure you write me a, a review. And then find me on my, my website, melaniemitro.com. I have all my podcast episodes and, and blog posts there as well. So thanks for tuning in to Business Tip Tuesday. I will see you guys next week. And I hope you have an absolutely incredible last week of June. Thanks, guys. See you later.